ओम शांति टुडे बाबा इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑनेस्टी एंड बाबा सेज स्वीट चिल्ड्रन बी ऑनेस्ट विथ द ट्रू फादर इफ यू डोंट स्पीक द ट्रूथ योर सेंस विल कंटिन्यू टू इंक्रीज Now honesty is a very big subject and um I will share some thoughts I have about honesty and whatever I have understood in this journey So you see that uh honesty is an integral part of our life and honesty means many things in many places so i will try to cover some of those so you know when it comes to a relationship so honesty means um uh, so there is a certain code of conduct in that relationship according to the conventional institutional setup and then you live by that code is honesty so so if you are so if if i am an indian daughter then my father would call me at the age of 18 or 16 or i don't know these days maybe earlier and he would tell me that you have to be honest with me and don't do anything that lets me down so then i live by that honesty and <laughs> don't do something that supposedly lets him down so that's honesty and then when it comes to uh so you know i would uh, i would not do anything that i can't do and tell him so i would that's my criteria of honesty when it comes to a parent and then you know those paradigms keep changing so now parents don't expect that and it's not <laughs> dishonest on the part of children to break that code <laughs> so i am talking about that concept which existed 20 years back so so this why i'm giving this pretext is because it means a lot of things in a lot of different places and then in a marriage honesty is different and then you would use the word fidelity and then you would say that and you know there are again you know the, this concept uh, this whole um, idea of honesty is also shifting so uh so i will tell you one very interesting thing and this is not about marriage this is about uh so you know these relationships that people have before marriage so boys and girls they enter into relationships and then there is this one girl who told me that didi you know um uh, i uh, i have been in five relationships and i've been honest in all five of them so i said okay so it doesn't sit very well with me so could you please explain how you can be in five relationship send honest with all of them so she said uh, so uh, so i have been uh, i have not been in five of them together so one at a time and every time i was with someone i was honest so i said okay so that counts as honesty so she said yes these days if you are with someone you have to be honest with that person and then when that's gone then the other one so you have to be honest with the second so that's how it is so i said okay so so this is the new concept of uh, fidelity or honesty and then um so you know then in a marriage also somebody would say that dishonesty means um sexual misconduct somebody would say that you know even if you're thinking about somebody that's dishonesty or 
if you're talking too much that's it dishonesty or if you're giving away your money to somebody that's dishonesty so it depends on how your value system basically and then it's all and then there is this honesty with the self which many people talk about and um, then they say that i'm a very honest person and uh, then you ask them don't you get angry or don't you abuse anybody or don't you so they said yes they say yes but only when the occasion demands so it's not initiated by me it's something that i have to do when the occasion demands so then so everybody is honest or dishonest according to their moral code so everybody has a certain moral code and um so and then there are some who have no moral code so they can do anything and still feel very honest so so that's also there so you will find people who according to you have done the most dishonest thing but then they would say that uh, no i have been very honest and then you can't challenge it because it's based on morality so though no moral code so everything is honest so and then i will tell you one very interesting incident that happened so i went to one office once and there was this one person i knew in that office and i told him that i need to get some work done so if you could um uh, introduce me to someone who would get the work done who could get the work done it would be very nice so he introduced me to somebody and then uh, when i started interacting with that person i understood i figured out that this person expected some bribe from me so then i went back to the person who had introduced and i told him you see he you said he is an honest person and he would help me and now he is asking for a bribe so he said you don't understand sister this person will do your job after the bribe others will not do it after the bribe also so he is pretty honest that way so if you go <laughs> if you don't go <laughs> Uh, according to how i tell you then you will end up paying the bribe anyway so bribe is not optional it is mandatory but your work will not get done so i said okay so that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty honest of him then so so this so you know why i'm talking about these things is because there are various um, and and you it is interesting that this personal concept of honesty is so profound that you cannot challenge anybody who believes they are honest so if if somebody believes i am honest i am right you have no idea how strong their belief is that i am honest and i am right because it is very very subjective and personal and um and it, and everybody is suiting themselves when it comes to this and um, i have seen numerous incidents where something looks very very dishonest to me but it looks very honest to the other person and i have not been able to convince them that it was dishonest <laughs> so i have i have been able to give them a guilt trip but then not that i've been able to bring them to a place where they say it was dishonest no they would say okay you felt bad so i am really feeling sorry and all of that but or your expectations were not met and stuff and like that so but not that i was dishonest so this is how honesty works in this world now when baba talks about honesty and then there is another thing which is the truth so saying the truth so i always speak the truth now what is the truth truth is your idea of what happened so you think that this happened and the other happened and then it's very subjective so 
uh, it's not like so i tell you that the truth is that this person abused this person and i will say this in front of the court of law but then i don't know the back story i don't know why this person did what they did or why this person took it standing what they did so i don't know the back story so i have a certain small um, petty hole through which i am looking at the world and then i think that's all the reality there is and then i say i'm speaking the truth but then that truth is being seen through a very small portion of the reality so i don't know whether that counts as the truth so all of these things are there and then there is the honesty that baba talks about and baba is not talking about honesty baba is talking about honesty with baba and what is honesty with baba so honesty with baba means you understand what baba says and check your thought word and action whether they are in alignment with what baba says okay so first thing is you we check we understand thoroughly what baba says because if i don't un- read the murli if i don't um, uh, have deliberation on the murli i don't attend the manthan i don't understand what baba says so then i will keep moving with this fancy idea that i am very honest to god na people will say mera bhagwan janta hai na so so yeah, i don't know whether bhagwan would say that so that's also there so understanding so baba is not a concept anymore he is not abstract he is not inaccessible he has come from the soul world he is sitting in the body of brahma he has told everything that he needed to say he has to- given us every direction and he has voiced it clearly so there is no confusion about what god says and when we we pay attention to the murli we understand his directions we understand what he says and then we have to check our thought word and action in the light of what he says and properly ascertain whether we are going we are doing as he says or we are not doing it and this is what this is the honesty that baba is talking about and baba says that um your concept of honesty in the world may not pay you or may boost your ego whatever but baba's how what the honesty that baba is telling about if we really make an effort to inculcate that within us then this honesty will make us true so sachche baap ke sath sachcha rehne se sachche ban jayenge to sachcha means again you know you will become pure gold if you stick to this honesty and then you will be eligible to belong to that golden age such khand ka malik so this is why honesty with baba is so important because it has a purpose when i when i make an effort to understand what baba says and when i check every day so baba is talking about the chart today and baba says before going to sleep make sure you check your whole day everything that you do during the day and make sure that you check every second and you check it in the light of what i say and then you check whether your thought words and actions were in alignment and consonance with what i say or you did something else 
and this honesty is very important because it will make you true it will turn you into pure gold and um so this is the method but what is most important is the intention so you see the laksha or the or the aim is to become pure gold so are you interested in that so are you interested in becoming the pure soul and if you're interested then this method is full proof it works like anything so you know uh, so people say that where there is a will there is a way so the problem is not the way the problem is the will Okay, so the problem is not the way, and we have God, so He is telling us all the way. But then we we have to first have the honesty about the will, that pure intention that I really want to be pure, and then this honesty. And today, Baba says something very interesting. Baba says. don't give me a chart about parts of the day give me a chart about your whole day <laughs> and it's very it's very important because you know once there was this young girl and i have given this example many times and she came and uh, i asked her to do amrit vela and i asked her to read the murli and stuff and then she would every day come and say didi my anxiety pills are not reducing and i'm doing amrit vela i'm reading the murli and i am doing traffic control and this and that and every day the same thing and it was 15 days were over and then i thought this is impossible baba's um, baba shrimat always works it's worked for everybody so then one day i made a set and i said okay so you wake up you do amrit vela you read the murli you do the traffic control you eat pure food and what do you do the rest of the day so she said i watch netflix all day yes all day apart from what you tell me to do i that's what i do so i said okay then even god can't save you <laughs> so so this is very important that it doesn't only matter that you do what baba says but the whole day chart because you know sometimes we are not uh, so we do something you know maybe in one hour we do something that spoils the whole chart and when we say dishonesty with baba so hiding what we do is a form of dishonesty so sometimes we don't lie but we don't tell the truth and that's dishonesty and whenever you lie you know that you are on the wrong just let's make this clear so whenever you are hiding something or lying that's where you recognize this is not the right thing to do and you do it anyway and then the solution you find is hiding and lying so this is why baba says first thing honest intention second thing honest checking in the light of what baba tells us and third thing is honesty in the sense that i don't hide don't lie i speak the whole truth i share the whole chart with baba and if you have such a deep relationship with baba that is you can um uh, so, so you can really uh, feel baba and you feel a sense of responsibility with baba and um you understand baba so much then you can submit your chart you know e- even in remembrance so you can just before you sleep you can give it to baba 
But if you don't feel Baba that much, then it's a good idea to give it to your Nimit Didi, that is me. Because you know, uh, sometimes we think that because Baba is because Baba, I can't see Baba and Baba can't check my chart and tell me something. So it's a safe idea to give it to Baba in remembrance. And because if I give it to Didi, then Didi will uh, start in the next class about how bad my chart was. And then everything she says will look like a comment she makes to me. So I don't want to do that. But then the whole purpose of the chart is <laughs> to give you the message that you need to receive in that situation. So it, it requires some courage, but it's a very good idea to tell the truth to your corporeal instrument. And if you really want to progress, that's how you do it. Okay, and otherwise, uh, and if you really have that kind of practical relationship with Baba, you can do it even in remembrance, but uh, you have to check that for yourself. So this is something. And then another thing about what do we check in the chart? So just like I said, uh, everything that is Baba Srimad. So when I check my chart is mostly three aspects. So first thing is, do I do what Baba asked me to do? So there are certain things that Baba every day underlines in the Murli for us. Amritvela, paying attention to the Murli, revising the points in the Murli, staying in Baba's remembrance, purity of the body, purity of food, purity of thoughts, having soul conscious drishti, not speaking ill words, not getting angry. And today Baba has told about gossip. So no gossiping. Or if I have uh, done some disservice. So you know, sometimes you don't intend to, but um, you maybe you are too excited or too body conscious and then you end up speaking something you shouldn't and then that is a form of disservice and then somebody loses, um, somebody uh, doesn't trust that the place you go to is a good place or you know is a, is a place where they would like to go to. <laughs> so that's a form of disservice. So Baba says pay attention to that also. So Baba underlines many things every day. So what not to do. So pay, checking whether I abstain from all of that and whether I uh, accidentally or otherwise did something that I shouldn't have done. Then, and I will tell you one thing. So uh, I will tell you a very personal uh, experience in this regard. So, you know, Baba says, um, today in the Murli, Baba says, don't talk too much. So don't, uh, don't speak anything too many times. And you know, we have this um, morality that we, we think correcting somebody is my moral responsibility. And, and you know, correcting is important, but uh, correcting in the sense that you tell them what is, but if you keep, if you have figured out that this soul will take time, but still out of your sanskar, not out of your role or responsibility, but out of your sanskar, you keep talking too much. This is a very small Srimad. So if you keep just pointing out every one hour or half an hour. I have seen that it takes away your peace. And um, there was a time in my journey when I did that. And I felt that even when we are in Baba's Yagya, you know, it's important that things happen in a 
organized manner and there should shouldn't be mistakes and this and that and there are so many reasons we give to ourselves and then i used to keep correcting so i used to, even while we are in the bhandara or cooking i would say you know just wash immediately don't keep the utensils or cut it this way or that way and keep correcting and then i figured out that if i do too much of that then it takes away my peace and it's a very small shrimat looks like a very small thing but somewhere in my uh, journey i practice that i will say one thing only once and speak it with conviction with baba's love and you know in the murli today baba speaks a very profound thing baba says if you write a letter to someone in soul consciousness then baba says i'll read that line to you baba says if you write in a state of soul consciousness he will melt while reading it so if you baba says that even if you write words in a soul conscious state the vibrations reach that soul and it is very very profound this thing and baba says and if you are soul conscious and you are speaking something then it has the maximum impact and if that is not able to move the soul in front of you and that's not able to make them do what you think they should do then you have to wait you have to have patience they will take time and you don't have to lose your energy so uh, don't go for maximum go for optimum so you know, optimum investment is where you invest with the highest returns if you invest too much and re- receive a little more return then that's not a good idea so these are shrimat and baba says that check your day in the light because if we really check with honesty then we will move to a stage where we will become pure gold so check against shrimat and check that you are not doing what baba has asked you not to do and every day in the murli baba will point out something or the other that you are not supposed to do and it's not do or don't type it's related to awareness it's related to how you do it so you can always check that in the next day chart and then so so there is uh there is what you need to do and then there is what you don't need to do and then baba says you don't have to act lustfully or under the influence of ego or attachment or anger and that's something that you have to check so that is another section and then there is the third thing don't take sorrow so even if you have if if you think that you have done everything according to shrimat and then somebody is not happy with you or somebody is not treating you with respect or they are not uh, speaking sweetly to you then you don't take sorrow because when god is happy with you don't bother okay so don't bother anybody says i am not happy with you so choose not to be happy with me good for you but first check these two things okay because uh, if these two are not in place then neither will you be able to say with your heart that i am not bothered if you are not happy nor will you be happy after saying that okay so there is um this whole you know there is a karmic philosophy and ka- theory of karma and the law of karma is functioning accurately so we have to be in alignment with that okay 
so so uh, so what your mother thinks is not important so there is a question and it's a bizarre question <laughs> my mother is ready to give me shuddh bhojan if i eat fish twice a week she thinks not eating fish and chicken is abnormal can you please suggest something so you are a grown up woman you don't need to wait for your mother to cook food for you and i am sure there are many things you do without the consent of your mother so why do you have to be so such a nice daughter when it comes to baba shrimat so <laughs> so we don't have to think too much in these areas these are just excuses that we make to ourselves so discern that okay now this is about honesty so is it clear that and check the whole day not bits of it so sometimes you only check i did what i needed to do but i didn't do what i what i was asked not to do and that's okay so there is murli and amrit vela and there is yog also and then there is uh, impure food also and vices also and attachment also and everything so if you keep checking in the light of what baba says in with honesty then it makes you pure gold gradually okay so if you're interested you can do it and if you're not interested to become pure gold then what then what huh? then also baba will say tathastu okay so everything is tathastu you do you become as you do and it's a personal choice and if you read the murli baba will sometimes speak this language if you want to become this then you do this baba speaks this language baba never says you have to do it that's not baba's language baba gives a choice to the buddhi if you want to become this do this okay so this is one thing and then <clears throat> the murli is very full of uh, jewels but i will take some some thing one more point that is <coughs> baba is today talking about the avyakt stage and then baba says that so there there is the blessing and baba talks about the benefit of the avyakt stage but i will just spend some minutes explaining what the avyakt stage is now when you so we did it in the meditation in the beginning and the avyakt stage is when in deep silence you practice being completely detached from your senses and completely connected with baba and you see that our mind is all the time connected to our senses to the eyes ears everything and when you turn your mind within and turn it to baba which is called man mana bhav and you practice it very Uh, you know with honesty and with regularity and consistency then you create a stage where you are in this world but you are not entangled or enmeshed in this world you are completely detached and completely in communion with baba and then in that stage whatever you do will be done in detachment in lightness and as an instrument and it will be full with what baba has given you or baba is giving you and that's an avyakt stage and usually you know when so uh, whenever there is any program or anything that we conduct so we never think about the program too much we practice this avyakt stage where we look at ourselves as a as an instrument deeply connected with baba totally detached from the seva and then in that state of detachment we totally indulge and do the seva 
So that's doing seva in the abhyakt stage. So this is something that Baba asks us to do. And then in the slogan, Baba says, so this is also uh, your reply to understanding the instrument consciousness. And Baba says, when you do everything like an instrument, you will not become tired. And this is one of the benefits of the avyakt stage that when you do everything in such a detached and powerful stage, you can do everything, you can be an instrument for everything and never be tired because you don't get tired with the work, you get tired with the consciousness of I that you create while doing the work. Yes, that consciousness, so that makes you tired. So if you just leave that and you do everything like an instrument, so Baba is giving me the knowledge, the seva, the power, everything. Why am I so, uh, what am I worrying about? And if you do it like that, then it makes, keeps you very light. And a living example of, um, so ba Dadi Prakash Maniji's life, is an example of how you can do everything and stay very light. And Dadi was known for her light state of mind. So when she went to sleep, she would go off to sleep in not even five minutes. She would take to sleep. She was so light. She, she didn't have anything left to process. And she would fall asleep instantly and all day she would handle the whole yagya and everything that happens in the yagya. Okay, so that's all for today. Go through the murli. It's full of jewels. So discern them for yourself. And today Baba, and today we will offer bhog to Baba. It is Satguruvar and... There are some children who offer bhog to Baba every Thursday. So their remembrances also I'll take. And then there are some who have birthdays. And then there are some who have been through some karmic settlement. And now they want to thank Baba. Some who are outside India and they want to return safely. <laughs> because now the COVID situation is changing. And there are some who have plans ahead and they want those plans to go well. <laughs> so, so, and then there are some who just want to thank Baba for everything Baba has given. So, I will take all their special remembrances to Baba and then we all, we all will join and take our love and remembrance to Baba. So, let me just have patience for two minutes. I will direct you to the other room. Om Shanti.